is it the coastal there in the coastal they're division? The coastal with, with, yeah, with the fact that I and to be honest, I felt that Georgia Tech was probably the second best team in the ACC, but I didn't think they would make the ACC title game because I think that I thought the best team was Virginia Tech. But now with Darren Evans being out, I think that Tech has a really good chance of making it to the ACC title and winning the ACC title. I really like Georgia Tech. I like what Paul Johnson is doing down there with the triple post office. I mean the triple option. He's the triple post. He's <laughs> <Post. laughs> <Post. Post. laughs> <Post. laughs> a basketball. I'm talking about the triple <laughs> offense. <laughs> oh, no, I, but because I, it's so hard to guard if you have a short time to prepare for it. Yeah, and I've said this. I, I think now that Virginia Tech is is not going to be the, the ACC um, champion, which I had previously picked, I think Georgia Tech will go to that game and play uh, Florida State, the, the fighting Seminoles down there. Um, but I, I still think Georgia Tech has got to work some kinks out in their offense. It's definitely potent, but you saw twice last year where when folks shut down that, that first you know uh, option of their offense, that they seem to just kind of stall a little bit. And once they can implement a passing game and maybe have a, a secondary game plan to go to if the team uh, stops their first game plan, then they'll be definitely a dynamic force to stop. But I think right now they, they just have to show that second round punch that, that they missed last year against LSU and, and against North Carolina and Chapel Hill. I mean, you guys keep on paying a lot. Visit Virginia Tech, visit Georgia Tech. I still think basically Boston. I mean Boston is all is Boston is there. I mean re, I mean re, I mean remember against the run they were number one. So I mean even though, even I mean even though they lost a lot of player, but they had some player basically just like basically like UGA. They have fre, I mean they have freshmen stepping up. And can you be those freshmen? They be, I mean, they have that. They have different. I mean, they have offensive line, defensive line. They they're coming back. They have those freshmen who have basically they have that experience. So I I still think Boston. I mean, Boston is there. I mean, I don't I don't mind Georgia Tech because I know Georgia Tech. If you just learn how basically how to stop the run, Georgia Tech. I start since then. I mean, since they lost basically the second the second. I mean, their second quarterback and. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that Dwight can basically can throw all the deep ball. Like, uh, what's, what was again the name of the second quarterback? I forgot the one, the one who got injured. Jay uh, Show. Yeah, I mean, cause for, I mean, for him he had a strong arm, and see, I mean, since he's done for four to five weeks, I don't, th I don't think that like any team, if you take a team like Miami, if Miami can just learn how to stop the run, I think George, I mean, I think that like Georgia Tech. Uh, done. North Carolina did it. North Carolina did it last uh, last year. And I don't. F all they just need to do is just study the run. And I think Georgia Tech may not go to the ACC championship. But I still think Boston's gonna be there. All great points, Francis. And I'm I'm looking at BC schedule. It's Cupcake City. <laughs> so they might be able to make it. I mean, they only play two ranked teams: Florida State and Virginia Tech on the road. So it, it might have a chance. I that's, mean, that's a really good point. They start the season at Northwestern at Kent. I mean, Ugh. they at home against Northeastern and at home against Kent State the first two games of the season. So they got a cupcake schedule. So they might actually be able to do it. That, that's a great point, Francis. BC might be able to sneak sneak in there. I think Boston College could be a sleeper, but I'm I'm still not convinced. They got a new offensive coordinator and and their quarterback position still isn't settled yet. So they're still trying to work out some kinks and those cupcake games to start off the season could be uh, beneficial to them to see what what kind of team they actually have but but I think overcoming FSU and, and Wake Forest and if Dabo Sweeney can turn Clemson around will be too daunting of a task for the the Boston College Eagles to overcome KSU Sports Radio. Not to mention that they lost almost as much talent on their D line that Tech did. Tech lost three guys to the pros but they lost two uh, they lost a first rounder and a guy who was taking early in the second round at the D-tackle position. But also, uh, I'm glad that you mentioned Wake Forest because we're not we're not really talking about Wake Forest, and Wake Forest has become a force in that ACC. Uh, what's the, uh, Jim Grobe, is it Jim Grobe at uh, Wake Forest? He's put together a program there, and yeah, they're replacing Aaron Curry, but uh, Riley Skinner is uh, one of the most accurate quarterbacks in the nation. He's another guy that nobody Riley talks Skinner's about. Nice. Riley Skinner's really good, and so, that, I mean, they could make a, a run at the ACC title. Al, you know how many students go to Wake Forest? Uh, we talked about it. Was it, I, I, I saw that somewhere. Is it uh, 20,000? 
Well, it's not even that much. It's yeah. sixteen. It's in the five figures. I mean, it's in four figures. It's like six thousand or something like that. Yeah, it's like eight thousand. I think it is. Yeah. I, I, I remember because we talked about how small Wake Forest is and how KSU. I'm pretty sure is bigger than Wake Forest. Yeah, and I, I, I read. I I don't remember where I read it, but after we had that conversation, like eight thousand. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's not ten thousand students. Yeah, okay. because it's hard school. to get in. Right, right. School. A lot. Because it's it's I mean it's hard to get in. Basically, those are the schools. I mean those are the schools just based on Notre Dame. I mean it's hard. I mean maybe uh, even I mean even though it's hard to get uh, to it's hard to get in, but they still have talent. And I think I think they might also be like the other sleeper like in the ACC. So. We never know. Let's just, let's just get our popcorn ready for <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, just I'll to watch you. it. <laughs> yeah, I, I think Wake Forest, a lot of folks are, are overlooking them. And, and Riley Skinner, I think, could arguably be the best quarterback in the ACC. He's, he's returning, and it's, it's going to be big for them to have a leader at the quarterback position. They returned most of their, their offensive line and, and running back, so that'll be, be big. He's just got to break in some, some new receivers that – they weren't starters, but they did get a, a lot of playing time last year. So that that could be an interesting side on the um, the Atlantic Division to see if they can give uh, Florida State a run for their money. And and you know Davo Sweeney got Clemson under control last year, so it'll be interesting to see if he can sort out the quarterback spot and and get them back on the right track. Okay, Shoe Sports Radio, Mr. Morris, LT, Francis the Frenchman, and of course yours truly, Uncle Goody, right here live in the office. With Brett Favre. I want to talk a little bit about Greg Paulus, though. Uh, was named the starter up at Syracuse University after playing four years at uh, point guard at Duke. When uh, when Paulus was in high school, he was a national Gatorade player of the year. Uh, coming out of high school, chose to play basketball at Duke, but now uh, was named the starter, of course, at Syracuse. And I'm just interested to know from you guys, what do you think is going to happen up there with Paulus, and how, how, do you, how do you feel everything's going to work out for him? I mean, he's been away from the game for four years, and uh, it'd be interesting to see if he can still has the skill set that he had uh, while he played in high school, while he's a high school parade All-American. I mean, I think I think it has a huge potential, because, uh, I mean, when he decided to start playing football, I mean, he even when he even went to train with the, with the Green Bay Packers, I mean, it shows that it shows that basically still had that potential and everything. So as a, I mean, as a starter, I know he's not gonna put big numbers, but at least Syrac, I mean, at least for like a program like Syracuse, I mean, they're still gonna be like on top of the East over there. So, I mean, I think it's a good idea. So if he's tank, at least they know they have somebody else who can replace him. So I don't mind. I don't mind him playing the football because I mean, the I mean, his record basically in high school was like. You mango, so I don't mind playing. I don't mind him being like a starter for, for Syracuse. Yeah, KSU Sports Radio. Uh, Cuse has been down for the last three, three, four, five years, maybe six. Mm. They've been really down. <laughs> Pretty much since Donovan McNabb. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a big Cuse guy, but uh, they've they definitely been down. I'd like to see a Cuse come back up a little bit. Hopefully, Paulus can send him in the right direction. But it's it's going to be very interesting to see how Paulus does after being away from the game for so long.